today we are going to learn uh, how to measure the band gap of a particular semiconductor and for this uh, experiment we have to uh, use some, some specific apparatuses and the apparatuses are uh, one diode we need, uh, one semiconductor diode, one thermometer, one copper vessel, and regulated DC power supply, microammeter, heater and backlight lead. You can see that this is the white board and this white board is the uh, main circuit board and here the wooden box inside the wooden box this is the copper vessel and inside the copper vessel some oil is kept here and uh, you can see that there are two um, uh, wires connected and the wires are actually the p and n terminal of the germanium diode kept inside the oil so we'll put it close now like this and here you can see that there is a stand by using this stand we can uh, put the thermometer inside the oil like this now what is the band gap of a particular uh, material the band gap is actually measured uh, the energy difference between the top of balance band and the bottom of the condensation band so depending on the value of the band gap actually uh, the materials are categorized in the three broad uh, category so semiconductor is one of them and we know that for a particular semiconductor the band gap ranges from 0.5 to 1.5 electron volt and for metal this band gap is actually zero because of the overlapping of the condensation band and balance band and what the third one is the insulator and in, in case of insulator the, the band gap is quietly large and it ranges from uh, more than 1.5 to 2 electron volt connect a circuit diagram first here you can see that this is the circuit diagram drawn here here you can clearly see that is the battery positive and negative terminal and microammeter is connected in series with the battery and here you can see that uh, PN junction diode is connected here in reverse bias. That means the positive terminal of the battery via the microammeter is connected negative of the diode and negative of the battery is connected positive of the diode. Okay. Now here you can see that the PN junction diode is immersed inside a copper vessel. Inside the copper vessel there is uh, some oil kept inside the copper vessel and you can see that there is a thermometer kept inside the oil and also the diode is kept immersed inside the oil okay now and therefore if you put some voltage here suppose you are putting some voltage constant voltage 1.5 volt then depending on the temperature you will get different reading of current is okay so what we have to do we have to increase the temperature up to 80 degrees celsius and then switch off the heater to during the cooling cycle we have to take the reading of current in the microammeter and uh, temperature in the thermometer so you will get temperature versus current reading so now i will tell you how to connect the circuit diagram first here you can see that in the circuit board there is a microammeter connected and these are the positive and these are the negative terminals of the microammeter here is a fixed power supply of 1.5 volt this red one is the positive and black one is a negative terminal and here you can see that this is a main switch power switch and then if you put it on then uh, you can connect the circuit and then take the reading here you can see that this is a red one is a uh, positive terminal of the diode and a black one is a negative terminal that means n terminal of the diode okay now i will start the circuit diagram the positive of the power supply will be connected to positive of the microammeter and microammeter negative will be connected to negative of the diode and finally negative of the power supply will be connected to positive of the diode so this is a very easy circuit diagram we have completed it okay now i will switch on the power you can see that if i switch on the power the red light is on now and here you can see that the current is increasing up to um, 19 microampere okay now the heating heater controller is kept at around 70 75 percent that means the temperature of the oil inside the copper vessel will be increasing at the same time the temperature of the semiconductor diode will be also, also increasing so what you have to do first <clears throat> we have to keep increasing the temperature of the semiconductor diode and uh, maximum temperature we have to put it here at 80 degrees centigrade and while cooling you have to take the data of the current in the 5 degrees Celsius difference. Okay, here you can see that now the temperature is around 55 degrees Celsius. The temperature is around 5 degrees Celsius, and here uh, the current is around 19 microampere. So, as the heater is on, the temperature will be increasing gradually, and at the same time, the current will be also increasing. 
around 70 or 75 degree celsius you have to switch off the heater and if you switch off the heater the temperature will be still increasing up to 90 or 95 then it will be stabilized at some temperature and then again it will start decreasing so while decreasing when the temperature is ready uh, when the temperature is around 80 degree centigrade you have to start taking the data of current in micro ammeter and up to 40 degree celsius you have to take the reading of both temperature and current okay now here you can see that there is a table you can see and then temperature readings will be from 80 degree celsius to 40 degree celsius in the difference of 5 degree celsius now we have to convert the temperature from degree celsius to degree kelvin um, so now we have to convert the kelvin scale temperature to 1 by t so we okay now from the microammeter we will get the current is reading in microampere so here in this column we are getting that value and each and every data corresponding to each and every temperature we are we have to write down in this column and finally you have to convert the microampere current to ampere current by multiplying 10 power minus 6 and then we have to uh, calculate what is the uh, reading of log base 10 of that current in my, uh, in ampere so here in the final column we will get log 10 base is okay now finally what we have to do we have to draw the graph uh, log 10 is versus 1 by t here you can see that this is a model graph log 10 is versus 1 by t 1 by t in kelvin inverse unit is along x axis and log is base 10 is along negative y axis if you connect the data point you will get a straight line like that so that straight line will be the log 10 is versus 1 by t graph fine now we have to take two points exactly on the line connecting those data points what you have to do you have to calculate the slope of the straight line by using this formula slope is equal to y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 what is the formula for calculating the band gap of the semiconductor the formula is band gap energy eg is equal to 2 multiplied by 2.303 multiplied by slope of that straight line multiplied by boltzmann constant kb divided by 1.6 10 power minus 19 and the unit will be electron volt so if you put the value kb here and if you put the value of slope what you have calculated from the graph here then you can easily calculate the band gap energy of the particular semiconductor and the unit will be in electron volt so from the particular experiment of uh, energy band gap of a particular semiconductor we got uh, the temperature versus current uh, plot and uh, we plotted log 10 of the current versus 1 by t t is the temperature here and we got a straight line and from the straight line we have to calculate the slope of the straight line and then using the particular formula we already said uh, we can uh, calculate the energy band gap of a particular semiconductor what is the main uh, purpose of doing that because we know that for a particular range of uh, energy band gap a metal can be called semiconductor or metal and uh, insulator so if you know the exact value of a particular um, semiconductor band gap then we can uh, apply it in different applications like uh, for solar cell and led and so other semiconductor devices thank you